So, good afternoon, everyone. How are we? Ben's going to flick us over to the main show in a minute. So, this is what we're going to be doing today. Look, okay. Sorry, a few gremlins on the start there. We just couldn't get it to upload and go live. So, it's nothing worse than standing here and thinking it will. All right. So, today we're going to play around with it. Wow. So, we've got the hours in front of me. Um, weird thing with this is I can remember seeing some of these. I think Andrew Hall made some of these quite a few years back. I can remember seeing them. I've seen a few at different clubs and things around the country. Probably about seven or eight years ago, I made two. Got them home and had a play. And then it was kind of, I think Ben said in here, you could make an L. Went, yeah, okay. So, brought things in. And then went, ow, have I made these? How did I do them? So they look so simple. And that's not trying to put you off. Whole idea with this is we can tilt the head. Any position that I start to see I can move this about. So we can make our owl head move. All right, quite nice, isn't it? Not a seagull in sight. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm just going to bend down. I want to grab this. All right, we're going to put them out of the way. Woo, roller. Okay. Need to move. But time to go to work. Going to start off. We're going to do the eyes first. That's a bit of a weird thing. Most of the people, when I've seen them do these, the eyes are plastic toy ones that you buy. I went, no. So I've already had to cheat a little bit, okay? So I've got a few things we've got. So first of all, I've got something as a colour contrast for materials. So I have a piece of Paduk. This is about 12, 13 mil square, 100 mil long. It's not set in stone. You can change any of these sizes. I've got a piece of ebony that I've already turned down to a nice, accurate 5 mil length or 5 mil diameter over whatever length you can try and do. All right, it's a little bit fiddly. It takes me a bit of time. So hence the fact I've already done it. So I'm going to put that down there, try not to lose it. The black is the middle of our eye. We want to use the expanding pen jaws. We're going to grip down the middle. Okay, let's move the black. Now we want to make this nice and accurate and make it quick and easy to repeat. First bit done. First bit we've got to do, just going to knock the corners off. So that steer chisel. Just take that down. I'm going to taper the far end. Because now I'm going to cheat. Plug catcher. All right. Drill chuck. So I'm just loading the two together. Put it in the tailstock. I can bring that up. Let's just see if I've got enough taper on the tailstock end of the bit. And I can have a little bit more. I need to get the drill chuck to load properly. So by tapering this end down, I can fit it inside that plug catcher. Slide that up. I want a nice, accurate 10 mil diameter. So you can see where we're heading. Let's just bring our drill round so I can drop the waist out and it doesn't click. Slide it along. We'll come back a little bit now. Just going to take the label. We're going to come back here. I'm going to go back in again now. Let's bring our tail stop back so we can create a little bit more length. Better. In. Go as far as I can. Look, first bit done. Just changing the drill bit. Want a nice, accurate five mil. All right. So I'm just tightening that up. Move that out of the way. Now I know Ben's got his hand up, but actually I'm gonna just want to do this one. And a little bit of tape on the far end. All right. I've taken the live speed there and gently bringing the tail stock up, holding the drill chuck. That's a bit easier. So we can drill our hole. So we're trying to be nice and accurate here. Let's bring it back because I don't want to bang the drill up. Let's go a bit deeper. Got to remember to remove that swarf. It's going to expand and start to make the drill wonder. 
Slow speed puts you in control again. That looks better. What if we get just a little bit more? Let's see where we're down to. I said the light just running slowly, so that's good. So I can back that out. Okay. We could also, and Ben, I'm not really ignoring you, I promise. <laughs> okay. Just going to glue this in. So we're going to use some medium super glue. Okay. So Q3, new brand of super glue we've just got in, but really good. We've been a medium, we've got a bit more open time. So put a line on there, just a little bit. Now, I don't want to push it in too far. If I need something to push it in. The reason I'm really ignoring Ben is that if I glue this in, it's got a little bit of time for the glue to go off. Just playing with the tail stock shut. Need to bring it back. I hope I haven't got too much glue on that opening or it might have gone off. With the tail stock, I put a bolt. I can use it as a push. Right, so push that in. Get my fingers off the super glue. It's going. Said I wanted it to fit nice, didn't I? How about that? Okay. So we squeeze that in. We've got a bit of glue that's going to hold it together. I'll wipe the excess glue off. I don't know what happened. I'll get stuck to it. Drill chuck can come out. Okay. Ben. So we've got a question from uh, Snool Copper Eye. He's asking, what was that bit that you put in to cut it round first? So thin chisel, but these are out of ebony, look, okay? So. But the um, the bit that you put in the drill. Um, the plug cutter. That's it. Okay, so this is a 10 mil plug cutter. We do these at a match pair, different sizes. We do a box set. Why we've done it with a plug cutter makes it so much easier, quicker. I know it's parallel. Kind of cheating, isn't it? Instead of having to turn it down and get nice and accurate, it actually also plays the other part. When I want to drill the eye socket out in the head, I can use the 10 mil one of those. Actually, I've got something already down to the size I want, which is fantastic. Makes it quick and simple. As I kind of said, maybe cheating just a little bit. But trying to speed things up. We're going to trim that little bit off the end. All right, a little bit of ebony over. So I trim it off. It doesn't have to be ebony. You can have whatever you like. I've set the vernier up to 10 mil long. I'm sorry, Ben. I'm going to block it with my hand just a little bit. Or I drop it on the floor or I cut the... Right? So one to the second one. Up to the length of stop bar on the vernier. I can get it there. I'll try not to block everything with the camera. There you go. Got to start now. I've got to come over there. I'll drop it on the floor. Now, I did brush up today to make sure that I can find them. So, there we have those two little bits. They have a black dot in the middle, red outer. All right, they're down to 10 mil. Yeah, okay. Just checking the one I got the tape on, see how much we've got. Now, I need to put those somewhere safe. We're going to want those later. Take that out. I could do another one. I could turn this round and get more out of that if we want. We've still got a black dot in this. We've got a bit of use still, okay? But that's made something to make our eyes out of. Change chuck time, okay? Changing chuck is quicker for me in here. So we're going to change to centres. Ring centre. Got one. So I can get out the way. Slide a few things along. Tail stop ring centre, exactly the same. Now we're going to do head and the body. So we've got the two blanks. Head bit at the moment, I've got my hand, is 55 mil square as a cube. And again, it's not critical. You can have whatever size you want. The body is 55 mil square, but I've got 75 mil long. You can go longer, you can go shorter. So if you think of the ones we did when we opened, one of them's 120 mil long. Come down to 75. I've got three different heights, but the heads are the same. Let's start with the head. I've got a bit of a markings just to give me an idea, and I'm a little bit over in size. I want that 45 mil when finished. So I'm just loading that on the ring centers. Why ring centers? They won't go in very far. It doesn't damage the fibers, but provides good pressure. Got to come back a little bit. Bit of lightness on there. Put me in, just see what's happening. That looks good. 
Oh, what should we go with? Roughing girls to start with. Cranking the speed up. So we're now 2,000. Left hand. Roughing girls on top. So handles down low at this stage. A bit of movement on Torres. So. Down to a cylinder. We need a beading tool, which is the calipers. I said 45. So let's just set the ring calipers up. Just over. That's good. So I've set those up to give me a dimension. We need to have that down either end. Nearly through there. Timber wise, because someone's going to ask, I'm using acacia. Just something I've got. So, roughing that down. Lighter cut now, because I want to blend it into that 45. Take the tool rest in just a little bit. Beading tool, let's have a quick look and see what I've got. About five mil we run. So, handle down low. Heel cut. Gently raise it. The middle. Leveled off one end, other end, create a scribe line. Handle down low. As far as we can get. Now, the other nice thing with those ring centers, they give me a bit more clearance to get right down nearer. So, diameter wise, a normal four prong drive, that's going to get in the way. Bow gouge, we're going to knock the corners off. Our aim, we're going to make a ball. So, left foot is outside the lace stand, shifting my weight to right foot. Right cut, bring it round. The handles, like if you like, almost constantly move. One side. Do the other one. Oh, there, I've got my M mark. Having to lean back a little bit on this. So, want a bit more off the top there. Yeah, my feet are playing a major part to give me positions to get where I need to be. A little bit more off that end. We're going to put our gouge back up on the wall a minute. We need my skew. It's out there. Look. Just refining now. So using it almost like a scraper. Extend my shape a little bit. I'm refining very lightly that shape. I've got a bit there, I reckon a bit off there. And you're trying to get as near to a ball as you can. So, what do you reckon? It's not bad, is it? Ignore the little bits of room. We're going to get rid of them. Um, Ben's sitting here nodding and smiling. Um, I've done this a few times, all right, with these, okay? But you can see we're down to there. That's good. Just going to put it out the way for a second. We're going to change the block to what is going to be the base. Going to mount it on the same centres. Roughly find our middle. Just there. Spin it by hand. I've got no pressure on this at the moment. Very light. That looks pretty equal. Then I can do it up. It's going to sound sad, this, isn't it? My favourite centres. Okay. Again, we're taking the speed up a little bit. Handle down low with the roughing gale, gently up. Nearly round, the noise is continuous now, that's better. Little bit still to go, look. Good. That robust tool rest can me lots of access to get in here and use that grip to help me keep the parallel. So, roughening girls, I think we're done with. So, back up on the wall. We need to do, not going to matter which end, something to hold in a set of jaws on the chat. Just having a quick look to see what I've got out. So, cutting a turning on that end. Okay, so this is going to be our base. So all we've really done at the moment, if I bring them in, sorry, Ben. Right. Got a turn on them, one end, other end, we're just leaving square. Okay. Right, that's a bit of prep done. 
bring things back out the way. I can take this center. I'm going to leave it there. I need it. Knockout bar. Tap that dry bill. So the ring dry can go out the way. So to turn our ball, I need something to grip it. So I've made a little wooden chuck, if you like, jam chuck to fit in the O'Donnell jaws. I've hollowed out the top here so our ball will set oh, in there. Okay. We need something for the tailstock. So if we're our ring centre. I made up something that fits. It's not bad. Don't want too much movement. It's got to fit tight. Can't have any wobble. That's pretty good. I mean, you hear that? Okay, so a bit of air suction on there. It's got to fit nicely. So you need to be patient when you make that. But that will allow me to hold our ball. Going to grip it there. Bring those in. Check how much room we have. So if I'm going to make that wooden collar go on there, it's got to fit nicely so you don't get any wobble. Okay. Grab the chisel. We just start the live just to have a look and make sure things are where we want. So we mounted our ball 90 degrees to original. There's the little stubs left from the ring centers. We've now actually got faceplate work. So I've got to cut up towards the middle. The bowl gouge. A little bit. Knocking off high spot, turn it over. A little bit more pressure will be that. Then bring it up. I'll be nice and light. So each time I come back over, I roll the gouge over and I'm using just off centre of that quarter inch bowl gouge. We've still got a little bit of bounce. I'd expect to have something. So, skew chisel. Going to shear scrape. Not holding this dead flat on the torus. I'll move my body round. And all we're doing now is skimming off the high spot. Better. One more. We'll have a look. See what's going on. Going to move it, bring it round. So I've changed the orientation now. We're probably about 45. A bit more speed. Going to do exactly the same. So we skim it again. And again, all we're after those high spots. Let's have a quick look so I've got. I've got a little bit of a bear mark where I caught that a second ago. So let's just move it around once more. Last time. Should hopefully be pretty good. Got a line there. We can get rid of that in a second. So we're going to sand this now. So I'm going to put the air on for the extractor. We've got some 150 grit. This first one. Poison, that's better. Move it. So we change the orientation again. One fifty stair, we just moved it round once more. Quick look, see what's going on. The end grade area is particularly the a bit of examination. That looks good. So that's done all the hard work. 240. So again, we change the orientation. We keep moving it about. 400 grit.
Okay, so at this stage, we have a ball. It's quite important that we get a total spear. For that to sit on that base and do what we want, quite important. <coughs> Excuse me a minute. Okay, so we've got our ball. Nice, clean, nicely sanded. Just going to drop it back in here with end grain up. So fibres continue. Okay, Ben, what have you got? Um, so a couple of questions. Um, first one from Stewie. On the ring centres, if you dropped it and, and um, ruined the ring... What is, did you drop it on? Is there a way of fixing it? Okay. Yeah. Depends on which one you've done it. In reality, yes, you can to a degree. Uh, if it's dry one, tap it into your legs, put it in the headstock, tap it into a block, get a sharp parting tool, keep it level on the tool rest, come in from the front, you can redo the ring a little bit. All right? You can sand the outside or even the file with the lathe running. Okay. So you can repair them a little bit. If it's a tailstock one, you'll need to grip it on the revolving section. So you have to put it in your shut jewels. Possibly do that again, all right? That's not to drop it, <laughs> yeah. okay? Um, wooden floor can be better, so or foam matting around your leg can be good, all right? And then Jim B is asking about the tailstock piece, um, the bit that you've that I'm going to take made. it off in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Jim, I had to make two to get one right. Gives you an idea of how accurate you're trying to do. Other way you could do, if you want to speed things up, you could go with multi-head centre, which we do. We do a conical one. You can sand the surface, soften that corner edge, but it's metal on wood, so it tends to mark it a bit more, but round it a bit more. I prefer wood gripping it. It helps drive it, especially on the drive one. Tailstock one's not so bad because you're obviously giving pressure, not actually compressing it, all right? So that, that is possible. I'll take this off, and yes, it does need to fit, all right? And then a question's just come in from Callum. He's asking, um, he's managed to get some mulberry. Right. Um, how does that turn? It's horrible. Send it all to us. <laughs> all right. Um, mulberry turns like butter. All right. It's one of the best woods from what I can understand from people. And I have turned some mulberry. Lovely color. Does change color quite quickly. You'll get a beautiful bright yellow. Okay. Lovely white sapwood. Really nice to turn. But it does darken down to a more of a golden brown over the time, which is a bit of a shame. Um, it's a woodworm magnet, so keep an eye on it. It really does attract woodworm. But mm, an amazing timber to turn, all right? Did you get his address, Ben? Okay, right. Now, once we've still got this held, I've got the end grain fibres coming up, I think. Let's have a quick look. Did what a tell on this? Okay. Not going to matter too much. Got to be that way, Jason. Okay, we go that way, look. And I'm trying to line up the grain as parallel as I can, and grain-wise, just a little bit of tension. We now need to draw a centre line. I can roughly say about there. This is just the position of the eye. That's quite simple, isn't it? Just to draw a line round, you're holding it on the leg. Then we want to set out two points 90 degrees apart. So almost you want two corners. And this got me thinking about this the other day. It's like, where do I, how do I? First thing I want to do, I'm just going to turn my grain to line up with the middle of the jaw. Okay, down there. That looks good. I'm then going to whack the tool rest in here. We're going to keep my pencil level one there. Okay. If I undo the banjo and bring it back, move that forward into that one. That gives you my position there. I can even check where I am on my centre. Ah, okay, I could go, not quite, not quite maybe. We could bring it round, going to mess it up a little bit. So I can tweak it. So I'm trying to get the grain more equal here. Doesn't matter too much, but I could play round. Uh, I want to come up that way a bit more. So I'm going to do that line. I'll make it longer and we'll redo it. But you can see how I can just use those chuck jaws. And that tool rest, the robust bit's really nice. It just fits in between. So another selling point, if you like, that robust rest, it will go in there. Make that line just a bit longer so I know which ones I've got. Okay. You can see how we've marked that out. That was simple, wasn't it? So we've got those two lines there and here. Got center line, done with that. Um, I'm going to take this out. 
this is the cup holder quite easy to do tail stop one fits over i've got to get it off and i mean it does fit over nicely so i've hollowed it out reset's got a step hollowed out the tip and then this bit you can see the step on the back means i can put it in a set of chuck jaws having done that important bit and then shape the outside and the hollow so initially it's held in the chuck the sand where it is now and do all that hard work to get this to match all right quite, quite fun things to make look. so i put them out of the way we want this is the body check it runs oh what we got there what didn't i level let's have a look then a bit long on the bottom so i can see where i've not trimmed something not squared it up made more work myself what did you think the chuck key was for okay Right, so we're going to do the body bit now. And the reason I'm trying to work in the sequence, we are just moving chucks around less. Lift it out, bowl gouge. Shaking the top. So we take our curve. Coming down towards the base. Coming away from the chuck to start with. Slowly down into there. Picking our top. Give it a go. Limiting how far we come down, that's good. Just want to get up there, so the handle's moving. So we're taking the bulk of the shape out. We've got a tight curve at the top. Hopefully you can see the shape we've kind of got longer. Going to whiz up to here now. We need to hollow this top bit. Let's take the tailstock centre out just for a second. So that revolving ring centre, I just want that out of the way. So I don't catch my arm on it. Following the top. So left thumb dripping over the torus. The guys that have watched me enough know this grip so important for me. Grip around that torus. Just picking the ball up. Want to see where it sits. We need to be a bit deeper. Which means let's make a bit more room. That's better. So we followed out the bulk. I just dropped the tail stock on the floor just to get it out of the way. Just want to refine our shape. Fingertips, what's going on in there? So scraper. And come up to there. Up and down the middle, make sure we get a lump out of it. Gonna curl the top over just lightly. So that scraper just really refining things. Then we can come back round to this outer edge. So we deliberately left the base bit a bit thicker in diameter. We've got the spigot where the chuck is. I want to make sure we've got enough strength to do that hollowing. I want to square up the material nearest the chuck. So I've just got my skew chisel. Coming into there, a bit vibration, long point, turn that down as far as I can now. Over end. Still got small patch. I'm going to go back to the gouge. Where we've roughed it down to a cylinder. So I'm trying to bring the shape together. Okay. I'm going to turn the air on. We can sand that and get it out of the way then. And then we've got to finish that head. So the 150. It's all rest out of the way. So I've moved the banjo over. I've taken the low speed down.
working right down as near to the track as I can get. Blending this together and curving that top head. That bit there is what I'm after. That is good. So, 150 and 240. Four hundred. Touch and feel what's going on. That looks okay. Cellulose sand and sailor. Whilst it's held on the live, it's easier just to do this for this bit. Why didn't we do the ball when we got the ball down to a cylinder? Because we've still got to work on the ball. And if I seal it, it doesn't grip as well for the next stage. Uh, let's just whiz around there. That looks good. So we've sealed that. Checking what's happening up on there. That's good. Tool rest back in. Got as near as I can get without hitting the chuck or anything. Shorter tool rest. He says, look at that, look, look, tiny little bit. Okay. Gives you an idea how close I'm trying to be. Parting tool. I'm trying to undercut this just a fraction, so we're going to part this off. So my body stance is allowing me to get that undercut. And then hopefully little carving tool i'm just going to nick off that last little bit we could just sand the bottom let's just get that flat for a second right we're done for our base just for a minute not that exciting is it you can manage that one okay so i'm going to put it out the way parching tool back up okay back to that head we need to change the chuck or change the jaws. In this case, we're just going to change the chuck. It's quicker. So going from the O'Donnell jaws to a deeper set, longer set of jaws. Something more parallel, okay? Put them on. It's just going to clean... That's what I was after. One there. Got a compressed wood fibre on the register. Okay. So now we're going to hold this thing. And when I first started thinking about this for a video and how we do it, okay, this was the sticking point. How are you going to hold this so you can relate to those lines and get to where you want? Okay, so we need a couple of other things in place. So let's just bring the tailstock back up. I need that to give me a bit of accuracy. We're going to want that tailstock ring centre in a second, so we'll put it in. Do our ball. Now, it's like making one of these. And like I said, when I did the original, trying to figure out a way of making this possibly repeatable, presentable, and safe for all of you. If you want to have a go, you're not going to throw the ball around the room. Okay, so deeper set of jaws are going to help me do this. So what I've made is a hollow cup, okay? So this I mounted into the set of jaws. I turned it. I put a small hollow inside, and I'll show you that profile in a second, because having got it to about the size I want, and you've got to remember that recessing underneath has got to fit your ball a bit, I cut it in half on the bandsaw. It's safe to do because you've got a flat bottom, something stable enough that you can go through. Okay, so I put it through your bandsaw. So here now you can probably see where my ball's going to sit. Okay, so you can see that little slight hollow that will sit inside. 
All right. Then I can bring that one in. I can put them into there. Then let me just set up and then you yeah, will come to you, mate. All right. Get to there. Now, just two halves are going to work nicely on this. The other thing I found with doing it this way, oh, bring things up. I can then double check my positions. A little bit too much on there. So I've got to line up with the line that we drew all the way around it. Back to there, just tweaking it. And then I've got to line up by turning it 90 degrees to the other line. Let's check it. Put the dot in. I've got centre dot in the middle there. That's good. That one will go. All right. Done. Ben. Um, <clears throat> so I've got a question here from Callum. He's asking um, about laburnum. Um, have you ever done any thread chasing on laburnum? We did. When we did the acorn box, I can't remember what I used, but I'd actually did the original on laburnum. Now, you, it will thread chase. Super glue will help you. Thin super glue will help harden. The biggest problem I found with laburnum on a thread chase, you get very hard structure, which is the gold lines that you see in the end grain, a bit softer in between. So the, the super glue will help harden. If not, you're going to bounce off that hard line a little bit. But yes, it will thread chase. And a bit of paste wax will help lubricate it whilst you're cutting. All right. So yeah, it will. All right. Um, yeah. So he's got the, he can't find any laburnum. So he's got it from bowling balls. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Right. I'm going to bring the tail stop back. So what we just done, we lined up with the line we drew around the center and then the one coming the other way. We've got that cup chuck. I've still got a little bit of gap in between the jewels, which is good on here. Oi. And when we take it out, I'll show you. It sits on the top of those shorts. So I've got a reference point, again, to keep everything square. It's about gripping this and holding it nicely, making sure we tighten it up. That's it. Okay. First setup bit done. Dividers. They're on the wall behind me. Ruler. Now, on this size ball, I've worked out my eye sockets need to be about 20 mil. So you're going to say, what? Okay, this will make sense. We're going to draw a dot line from there. Whoop, if I can find my middle. There, bring it over. That bit. Good. Looks big. Better be all right. Okay. So we've scribed a line. Down on there. Bell gouge again. So we're using the tip of the gouge. We've got my left thumb and hand gripping round here. And you do it. Lots of you will try and grip finger and thumb here or overhand. Again here, I've got my thumb will push it forward. Nice and safe. I'm not touching the chuck jaws. Trying to go flip. And I'm working down to that straight line. There it is. Right, so we've got a surface. Doesn't look too bad. Changing things now again. We're going to that 10 mil little forstner. That matches that plug cutter we used earlier. So I'm going to bring... That into play at a second. So I'm just loading that into the tailstock. I want to make sure we're quite accurate. So again, it can be where helping the tip of it locate. And going to drill our hole. So I'm citing how deep I'm going, basically by looking where I'm up to on the drill, but that sounds a weird technique, but I've got that step on the top. I've gone two thirds the length. I can roughly see where I need to be. So there, uh, I think that'll be deep enough. I've got to do parting tool cut, which is up on the wall here. Bring the tail, tail stock back out. I want to be level. I'm a bit high for the width of the tool. It back, just do a touch, trying to light up how far out I want to be, 
So this is just creating a whip. There we go. Fluted parting tool. One of those weird and wonderful things that I've got that I haven't got in here really. Okay, so you can get this. Is Ashley Earls in the UK that make this? There's D Way ones in the States. But I can use this just to produce a little half round bead. Just having a feel of my finger. That feels good. It's going to come down using my skew chisel down to that lip now. Got a little bit chip out on the top of there where that bead is. So we're just going to go back, see if we can get that, clean it up. Again, fingernail, just telling me what's going on. One done. Now we need to put the eye into the middle. Uh, just grabbing a few things I want. Drill chuck and bolt will be good again. All right, which way round do I want to be? To there. So all I've done is locate that roughly in our hole. Use that bolt, use the lathe to push that in. All right, no little pin hammers or anything. That's easier than anything. So it's in. Has to be a little bit long. But let's have a play. So skew chisel start. We're just going to round it round. I don't want to damage too much of what we've already got. Shortening it back. So blending in down the side where I've got that little parting cut, a bit more off the top there. Had a quick look. Aye, aye. Oh, that one there. We want 240 and then our 400. So I'm going to drop the speed down to there. Do that little speed. Bring that shape in. Four hundred. So then we've got to set up and do the other eye. So what we got at the moment, we've got in there. All right. So I don't know if you which one you want now, but let's just bring them up. I don't know if you can see the red in there. And the black. All right. So I've got one. I've got to turn it around. Where's my other line? Right out here. Let's. Okay. So swing it round. Position it. Put it back in. Pin that back up for a second. Need to bring this in. So we bring the tail stock back up. And then I just need to chuck key gently. I'm just going to use the tool rest to support it just a little bit. I don't know if I can wiggle this a bit with my fingertips again. Using the ring centre, that nice fine tip to give us a guide of where that needs to be is there. Other way over, bringing it up. Not bad there. That'll do, I think. And then we can pin this up. All right. So I think you guys can see what we we'll do. We've got... The line that's running, the circumference of the ball that we start when we drew it between centres, running round, our crossover point. Okay. Ooh, I could even go... Yeah, we're not bad. We'll live with that. What's the worst that can happen? Just be a bit cross-eyed. All right, I'm just going to bring that tailstock centre back out. Check. We tightened it. Bring that back up and in. Lock it off. Need to find our middle height. We're pretty good there. We need the dividers again so we can go into the centre. 
scratchy there. Create a scratch line right around there. Let's see where it goes. Oh, that's good. And then we've got to repeat what we've just done on the other side. Tip of the thumb working nice and hard here. So I skim down with that gouge. Need to find our middle. Ten mil force in a bit. Going back into the drill chuck. We've got our dot mark to help find our centre. Take the speed down again, puts us more in control. Doing so about the same height as we were the last one. Then we want thin parting tool, which is can be using to give me the space off of that. About the width. Go. Looted pouting tool. Going to create our bead. We need to come up just a bit. Looking on our shape. Hopefully, we'll have a bit of a look in there. Skew chisel. We want to blend into there. So I've got a little bit of a curve on this now. Be nice and light. Just have a quick look to see where we are there. Okay, a little bit more. I'm just trying to get the spacing so it looks similar. I'm looking at the front and where the one comes in from the side. That looks good. Now I've got to find the other eye. Okay, chip. That sounds simple, doesn't it? It's nice, doesn't it? Good. Bring it up. Again, using that bolt just to push that in. You could put a bit of super glue. Wouldn't hurt. I'm trying to be nice and quick with this. They also fit nicely. That match pair seemed to work quite well. Got to do that shape now. Bit of material just up the front. Send it round. Let's have a quick look. So just sighting. Almost in down the chuck. Check my heights look about the same. Again, we're going to give that a sand. So 240. Ooh, we need to go a bit faster there. So the outside, we've got that flat edge where they join. So I need to keep the speed a bit higher there. Inside, not so bad. My idea for reducing the speed helped reduce the heat build up. All right, good. We then, this stage, need to, you can see it. That, this was what my worry at this stage is, can we see this? So let's just drop this out a minute. Let's undo it. You can see the little chuck thing working nicely, so it just seats inside. 
up to there. Ben's saying he's smiling. Ben, Ben's got sort of, um, uh-oh. Right, so, now I've got to position it. Uh, you see what I've just done? I'll make sure you can see it in a minute. I'll drop them back in. So the ridge, pretty much dead upright. All right. The artistic bit now. All right, I've come. Uh, I need to there. File. So this is small, half round, and flat on the other side. Smaller one, either will work. Or some of you might want to go carving tool. All right, you've got a choice in that corner. You've got to figure out where you want to be. One side. Just checking where we are. Where'd I come down to? It's come down to my eye socket, which I'm trying to get to. So little small recarving tool I'm using, or the the file will work. Coming back. And so I'm doing just bouncing around, just trying to check and just looking up and see where we are on the camera. Careful coming off the edge there. I want to roll this in a bit more, clean it up. I can use the edge of that. So we're now just making sure the beat looks about right. Smaller one should have bit more of a tapered edge it's a smaller sort of get in there trying not to damage across the eyes that's good let's move you guys back in a bit sorry but i didn't realize where i come back that's where okay pencil and it looks a bit crude i'm being a bit heavy look I found by colouring in with a pencil just highlights it. So if we take this out, to there. I'm just going to grab the 400 grit abrasive, and then I'll be back into this bit. All right, so if I get excess because I was a bit heavy with, I can sand that off. Sand around there. So what I want is the pencil down in that V. You could go with black pen. We've also now got to get rid of the pencil line. Comes around the circumference. Again, that 400 with the grain direction. Nearly gone. Oh, that's good. Now we've now got that wick. Not bad, is it? I'm quite pleased with it. So. Let's move that chuck. Oh, we want a bit of sailor. Got to do this by hand. There's no other way of the okay. A bit messy. Put the lid back on the cellulose sailor. Blue tissue. We can wipe it off. That brings it to life a little bit more. The eyes definitely. And that's I can't, I can't use stick on plastic eyes for this. No. All right, so we can make our eyes. So, next little bit, going to make him shine a bit. A few of you will have seen this quite often. So, Pigtail Arbor, we've really found it in the live. Stitch polishing mop. This is the twin section. One of these things you get lots of questions about. Twin section. So, one, two, you can get a triple. The stitching makes it harder. We're going to use a white compound because we've got quite a pale wood. So, a little bit. Next thing I need, something underneath, just to play catcher. We're going to work around that. So, I'm doing the base at the moment. 
Yeah, there you go. You could go with a friction polish if you wanted. This will last a bit longer. So the white compound will fill the little grain holes, so one part done. Now we've got to do the head. Got to hold on to this. Do you want to put the basket underneath just to catch anything? Work it round. Let's bring it to life a bit more now. So I'll get my on those eyes. That round to where that beaker's. That's done. Going to change it. There. Loose mop. Put that on. Carnuba wax. We want a little bit. And it does need to be pure carnuba. Again, just working round. One part there. All right, so let's move that out of the way. Knock it here. Let's move all those. Oh, I'm just going to bend down. I'll grab a box again we had, look. So hopefully we've got something here. Oh, I can move it about. Let's move back on the box a bit. I've got a little lump, I think. Probably just in the middle I need to flatten off. We can tweak his head. Let's bring, I think if we go to the overall, let's go. You can see the detail then. The eyes, little beak, so easy to do that little V cut just to do in there. Ring around the eye works nicely. The colors of the eyes, red and black, aren't too bad. Try to do a yellow center on some as well, see what happens. All right, with it being a ball, we can change the angle of where it sits, so we can change the angle of what happens. Um, we obviously know then that as Ben's already kind of said to me, no, you can't have one. Um, it gets gets takes over a bit. This, you know, and have that in there. So you can see by doing different heights how they look. We can move the heads round. We can, if you like, we can give you a real odd look. Okay, hopefully you've enjoyed. I've just thrown one off on the floor. Let's grab it now. I can see it. Look, major thing of being this, if you like, for a demo for you. You might own a chuck. You might have to make something occasionally to grip things, to make it safer, make it more repeatable. The safer bit's the optimum word there. When I originally did these, I probably just used a hollow capture, like Colwyn does with his fruit. It's great if it stays in there. If it spits it out, you don't have to mark it. So that didn't take a lot of making. I can keep hold of it. It's always there. I can keep an elastic band around it, put it in the cupboard, get it out. Anytime I want to do a ball where I've got, fantastic. You can make different sizes. Easy to do, all right? I said you about enough gripping surface inside the chuck. Square lip on the top helps keep everything flat and level. So that actually is probably the star of the afternoon, that little thing. And that was the thing that took me some thinking about the other day of what am I going to do to make this repeatable, all right? So as I've said, hope you've enjoyed. If you had, you'd give us a thumbs up, share it. I've got one other thing I've got to say this afternoon. Happy birthday to my lovely, lovely wife, Madeline. All right. Hope you're having a great day. I will see you when we get home. All right. So happy birthday. Bye. See you all.